Hi everyone, my name is Stacy Wixall and I'm back again with more great biographies for you to read. This month, let's talk about Starstruck. This book is all about Neil deGrasse Tyson and I really enjoyed it. So have you ever heard of Neil deGrasse Tyson? He has his own TV show and what does he talk about? Well I bet if you look at this picture you might be able to figure it out. This is a planet above his head and lots of stars sprinkled over, all over. He is an astronomer. When he was a little boy, he got to go on a field trip to a planetarium and that's where everything changed for him. He, would, he looked up and he saw all of the stars and he just was amazed. And from that point on, he couldn't get enough information about stars. He just wanted to learn more and more and more. He wanted to understand how does the universe work? So his parents realized very quickly that this was no joke, that he was really interested in astronomy. And he, even though they were not people with lots of money, they did everything they could possibly do to try to help him achieve his dream of knowing as much as he possibly could about the universe. And they bought him a telescope. And once he got his telescope, he was so excited, except for he didn't live out in the country. He didn't live in a place like Macedon or Palmyra where there are large open fields where you can go. He lived in New York City. So you know where he had to go? He had to climb up the steps all the way to the tippy top of his building, his apartment building that his family lived in. And he had to set up his telescope on the roof in order to look at the universe, all the stars and whatever he could see from the rooftop. Well, this made some of the neighbors nervous because they'd see him up there and they didn't know it was a telescope and they, some of them thought, what's he doing up there? Is that a gun? Is he going to shoot people? What's going on? So they called the police. And the police would come set and ready to, you know, take him off of the roof and tell him he couldn't be up there. But you know what he did? He shared his, teles or his, yeah, his telescope with the police officers that would come to see what was going on. And they would be amazed at what they were looking at too. So he never really got in trouble for being on the rooftop, but he did get reported quite a few times. <laughs> um, but he made very good friends with all the police and he got them excited about studying astronomy too. If you read this book, you're gonna find out that Neil's enthusiasm, his passion for knowing more about the stars and the planets and everything in the universe, is contagious, which is why um, as he kept studying more and more, he got invited to take special classes at the planetarium where his interest all started. And he, he even got asked to go on really great adventures. Like he got asked to go to Africa to see a solar eclipse and all sorts of different adventures opened up to him because people who were already astronomers and in the field could see how excited he was he was about all of this and opportunities came his way that were just amazing opportunities like can you imagine going to Africa to see a solar eclipse how exciting would that be so the more he learned the more he wanted to learn and he went to Harvard and he studied more and then People listen to him speak. And now, um, after all these years, he, he has his own television show and people just love to listen to him talk. He writes books all about the stars and the planets. Um, he helped to figure out that Pluto is actually not um, a regular planet. He's an amazing person, so check out Starstruck and find out more about Neil deGrasse Tyson. The next book I have 
I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, it's called All in a Drop. It's about Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek. And um, it tells you how to pronounce his name in the book because it looks like Leeuwenhoek or something, but they tell you it's Leeuwenhoek. So what an interesting man. This man was born in approximately, approximately the mid 1600s in the Netherlands. Um, so before there was even the Revolutionary War, Antony was alive, but in a different country in the Netherlands. Um, his father was a bas basket maker and he was a really curious boy. He's always looking at things and wondering, well, how does that work? You know, how does, how does a silkworm give us silk for our fabrics? All sorts of things. And um, he probably would have loved to have, have had the opportunity to go to school and receive lots of um, books and, and chances to learn more and, and study seriously. But his, his father passed away and he had to do something that that could help his family out to, to be able to survive and so he couldn't go to school as much as he might have liked he got a very basic education he didn't get an ed education that included learning lots of other languages but he did learn his own language and he got the basics down so he could read um in dutch and instead of going to school he he one of his relatives suggested that he should get a trade and the relatives a, was a lawyer and said you know don't worry i will help antony find work um we'll, we'll get him to apprentice with somebody he'll learn a trade and he'll be fine and that's exactly what happened and as it turned out his trade was working with fabric he was a draper so he sold cloth and if you're going to sell cloth, you want to make sure that the cloth that you're buying is really good quality. So in that time, the drapers would often look at samples of cloth with like a little magnifying glass or lens so that they could see the weave of the fabric and they could make sure that what they were purchasing was a very good quality because they could literally look through the lens and count the threads in the fabric. You could still do this today. If you have a magnifying glass at your house and you hold it up to like your bed sheets, you can look and you'll see how all the little threads are crossing, how they're woven together and you can count, um, you could make a, a, a measurement of an inch and you could count how many threads there are either going across or going up and down in an inch wide section. And of course, the more threads you have per inch, the better quality the um, fabric is because that means the more thread, the stronger and longer lasting the fabric will be. So it turned out Antony made a fine draper he always carried very high quality fabrics and that was because he looked very carefully to see um, what the thread count would be. And he, he didn't buy the things that were, you know, the lower thread count. But what he really found interesting wasn't the fabric or being able to purchase the best stuff. What really interested him was the more he would look at the thread counts and use his magnifying glass, he really thought, wow, this is interesting stuff, like being able to see something bigger with this lens. And then of course, this book came out. It was called Microphagia. And this book was um, written by somebody in London who had invented the very first, very basic sort of microscope. Now, remember, uh, Antony didn't get much of an education. Many people in his time that got to go many years to school would learn another language or two or maybe even three. He only knew Dutch. So 
he got his hands on this book, but he couldn't, he couldn't read it. But you know what he could do? He could study the pictures. And he looked at the pictures in that book and he thought, you know, I think I could, I think I might be able to make my own microscope. And it's exactly what he did. He invented his own microscope and guess what? Spoiler alert. His microscope was better than the original one that was in the book. Way better. And he, once he could figured out how to do it, and he didn't just make one. Um, you'll find out when you read the book. He would make, for each thing that he wanted to look at, he would make a little microscope and he'd set it all up and he'd leave it permanently because it was very fussy work to be able to get it just right to be able to see, you know, maybe a fly up close or whatever he wanted to examine. So rather than messing around and taking samples in and out, that would have been very difficult and fussy. He would just set it all up and that would be it, that he would leave it and he'd keep them on shelves. So if he wanted to look at something he had um, built a microscope for, a couple years ago, he'd go to his shelf, pull it down and be able to look at it. So he looked at everything you can imagine, anything, anything you can think of. He was putting, he was building these little microscopes and looking at things very close up. And the, the most amazing thing he, he thought to look at was a drop of water. And because he looked at the drop of water, that really was a revolutionary thing to do because you know what in this time period people didn't have any idea that there were little teeny weeny tiny living organisms in the water they didn't know because you know you can't see the teeny tiny things in the water without a microscope and in fact when he first looked at the water and he saw all these little teeny weeny animals in there well, I'm, he was pretty surprised himself. And when he told people, it took a few years for people to believe that, that there could possibly be animals so tiny that the human eye on its own can't even see them. People thought he was crazy. But then he, he let people uh, look through his microscope um, and also people copied how he made his microscope and they found out that my goodness Antony's not crazy at all there are little teeny weeny microbes they're called living in water so i just i thought this was such a fascinating book to read because he was so innovative and and he had such ingenuity to figure out how to make a microscope just by looking at somebody else's um, first design for a microscope, looking at pictures and not having um, maybe all the opportunity a lot of people had to read books that could have led him to this discovery. I mean, this was somebody who had so much curiosity and that curiosity stayed with him his whole life he, he constantly was looking at things and discovering things. So I really recommend you check out Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek's book, All in a Drop. Very interesting stuff, especially if you're a science person. I'm kind of a science person, so I really liked it. And finally, we have Noisemakers. It is 25 women who raised their voices and changed the world. This book was really eye-opening because I knew about some of the women in here, but there were quite a few I had never heard about, and they were doing all sorts of amazing things. Um, if you want to find out about women who do all sorts of amazing things, this is the book for you. And did you know, just for example, that there have been women who actually studied sharks, have hunted fossils, invented the very beginning of what we now call Wi-Fi? Did you know a woman did that? Um, and on the side, she was a famous actress. Did you know this? Um, 
a woman rode a, uh, rode a bike around the world wearing a skirt for the first part of it. <laughs> um, that there was a famous musician who was actually a spy. That there was a woman who agreed to, well, she didn't disagree. She wanted to sleep on a mountaintop where there were bears and coyotes and wildcats roaming around because she wanted to be a forest ranger and she she was assigned to be the person who would make sure and send an alarm sound an alarm if any wildfires broke out and she did this for years and she was all alone and she wasn't even afraid of all these bears and and coyotes and everything else roaming around can you believe this well if not you will after you read noisemakers because it's fascinating and you will be so impressed with all the things these women have done so i highly recommend this book and also just by the way i liked how at the beginning of all the stories and all the cartoons are done by women artists as well but at the very beginning of each story that is done as a cartoon you get a regular paragraph and then the story is told using cartoons or graphic illustrations so it's a fun read it's a fun read but you learn all kinds of stuff so until i see you again i hope you get busy check out some biographies and learn about all sorts of fascinating people I'm learning so much while I do this for you. And I know that if you check out some biographies, you're going to learn a ton too. So till next time. Bye.